Welcome to today's Entrepreneur Show. My name is Heidi Richards Mooney and I'm your host today and I am super excited to be interviewing my next guest. Uh, I actually have been following her online and um, through emails for many, many years and had the pleasure of actually interviewing her via a um, my We Magazine for Women many years ago when she made the top 100 women in e-commerce. So first of all, congratulations on that, Morgana. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about our guest today. Morgana Ray is the international number one best-selling author of Financial Alchemy, 12 Months of Magic and Manifestation, a sought-after teacher and pioneer in personal development. She's widely regarded to be the world's top relationship with money coach. Morgana's groundbreaking program for creating wealth has featured her on ABC, NBC, Fox, PBS, NPR, CNN, United Press International, Yahoo Financial, and Wall Street Journal Online. And the list goes on. Um, she's known by millions as a money magnet coach. And I want to just quickly say, and if we get a chance to before the end of this conversation, that she just did something so amazing. She got married. Was it 2015 that you got married? Uh, we started in 2014 and continued in 2015. We're getting married. Husband's idea. I was... 45 when I met him, never married. I just thought it would be great to get married once in this lifetime. So tell us about it. With the idea of getting married 100 times in 100 countries. Uh, this, let's see, which one is this? This is Croatia. This was wedding number three. And we're now at 16 weddings in 12 countries. Fantastic. So when you do that 100th wedding, it's going to be quite exciting. But what a, what a wonderful thing to do and what a wonderful way to see the world. You know, you're celebrating everywhere you go. And I imagine where you've gone, everybody has celebrated with you. It's probably like one big party, right? Well, we get married with strangers in other countries, become our wedding party. And it's like we get new families. Oh, we man. have our Turkish family and we have our Croatian family and we have our Slovenian family and we have our San Marino family. And in San Marino, they threw us the country they, they threw us and we never asked for or expected any of this but people love love every country loves love and so some people working in san marino said hey get married here and you can get married in a castle and in costumes and they knighted my husband wow so for every woman who has ever dreamed of her knight in shining armor <laughs> get married in san marino Wow, I think that's so amazing. So you married your knight in shining armor and then he turned into a real knight. Oh, how yeah. fabulous. <laughs> I know it's not part of the, the the business type conversation, but you know, think about this. The fact is that that you didn't do it for any other reason than because it's love and love does make the world go around. I think that's some yeah. really amazing. But now all of this can turn into something even larger. You can write a book about it. You could, I'm sure you've been on television many times about it. I mean, just it, the opportunities for when you are creative in life and in business, um, it's just astounding, isn't it? Yes. And I needed to create a business that would allow me to travel the world making out with my guy. In fact, in 2012, I designed my business model that I call my travel the world and make out with a cute guy business model. I had to reduce my one-on-one -on -one clientele. I needed to get all of my physical products switched to digital. And not only did I meet my husband eight months later, but I quadrupled my income. Wow. Wow. And really, and this will make sense the more we talk, but for me, money and love is always interconnected. And my experience in my life and with my clients and my vision for the world is we make more money when we put love first. Because money without love is a tragedy. And I think it is really the root cause of all the problems in the world. Oh, I would totally agree with you. I think if there was more love and less hate in the world, well, we'd never have wars, obviously. Um, that could be another whole subject for a, a big summit, wouldn't you say? 
Um, in fact, you know what? I the the recent the interview I had prior to this was uh, with Linda Pereira from Portugal, and I must introduce the two of you because she does these global conferences, and we're having our next one in March in Portugal. And that might be. If, have you been married in Portugal yet? Not yet. No. So maybe you could come be one of our speakers and get married there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna connect you and see if there's a room left on the roster, and if there is, oh my gosh, I get to meet you in person, which by the way, last year I met seven or eight of my global uh, uh, liaisons in person in Portugal because they all came to the conference. Not all of them. I have 20 of 23, but of those 23, I think seven or eight, eight of them came. And so that was just amazing. So anyway, let's get on with the show. How did you get started, started as the money magnet coach? Well, uh, the irony is I got started because I was so bad at money. I, good girl, never got into trouble, worked really hard in school, even after getting hit by a car and in a coma and a head injury oh and God. challenges, you know, concentrating and remembering. I still graduated from high school and went to a top college and, you know, I bought the promise that if you work hard and get good grades, you'll make a lot of money. And for me, that was 100% not true at all. Wow. And it also had nothing to do with the value that I gave clients from the very beginning when I started coaching. And I started coaching in the entertainment industry. And it was like I had this magical touch. And within weeks, people without credits were like booking TV shows and selling films and winning awards. And I just had, I intuitively knew how to connect people and I've always been very good at bringing out self-confidence and, and what people need. And it didn't matter. <laughs> I can, helping people is easy for me. Charging money for it was never comfortable. It brought up all of, all sorts of like dark ick, self-worth, anxiety, wanting to be a good person, issues and that so I thought oh well, the solution is I'll get certified so I got certified and had was making even less money so <laughs> I started taking business classes and marketing classes and sales classes and I am one of the world's great marketers and it didn't matter because I could do it all really really well I could have a line out the door of people who wanted to hire me and I did and I somehow magically was able to repel money to the point that I, and we're talking the very beginning of 2003 now was kind of, you know, my low point where I was struggling to make just a hundred dollars a month. Wow. Really? I know in Los Angeles where a studio apartment starts at a thousand. So this was, I was frightened. I was furious. I was devastated. I really, I, I had just taken a class on overcoming sales objections. You know those classes that tell you what to say if somebody says, I don't have time or I can't afford it. And I was so good at it. <laughs> Seven people in a row said they would hire me and zero showed up and zero paid. And that was when I lost it. Mm. And I, I, in my little one bedroom apartment, I dragged the drapes closed in my bedroom and got on the bed and lay down and started to scream. I was in so much pain and rage and I was out of ideas and out of hope and I wanted to die. Wow. So when, and I share this story because I know there are other people who feel this way because it's about so much more than money. It's about our right to exist, our worth, our, you know, our place in the world, our ability to create our legacy and impact others. It was, it's just like everything. And it was devastating. And two things happened. I made a decision that for me, money had to be my next area of spiritual growth. By the way, I'm not saying that has to be your decision. It's just that, you know, spirituality and helping people, that's my default, that's very comfortable. The other thing was I got really curious about what was going on inside of me, hidden, that couldn't be with money. Because on paper, I should have been doing really well. Pardon, pardon me, my husband just closed the door. Um, 
And so even though I wasn't making enough money to survive, I still had a coach. Wow. Thank goodness. Because, and I think he's, uh, Chuck Allen, I think he's one of the, the great coaches of all time. And he had this inspired moment in our next session where he asked me if money was a person, who would money be? And I had never thought that way before. And I instantly saw who my money would be, would be this big, scary, dirty, violent biker who terrified me. I never knew that I felt that way about money until I made it a person. And it made sense that no matter how much I thought I wanted money, my reaction to this man was so strong that I had to create maximum distance, no matter what. And now I knew why I was pushing money away unconsciously. And that, by the way, is the key, is if you find yourself repelling money or getting rid of the money you have, and you are doing everything you're supposed to be doing, and it doesn't make sense, and it hurts, you are protecting yourself from what you want. Sometimes this looks like you don't have enough. Sometimes it looks like you're really good at making money and even better at getting rid of it. I can't tell you how many coaches I am and healers and entrepreneurs that I have mentored who can make $7 million in a year and still end in the red. Wow. And that's why they come to me. Because if you need to protect yourself from money, you will. And by the way, this has become for me like bigger than just money. I think this is true in life. Like now I'm super happily married. And it took me a really long time to get there. In the year that I met my husband, I actually did my process on why I was protecting myself from love. I believe that when you're going for something and you're not getting it, I would really look at why you're protecting yourself from what you want. Because we're not idiots. We're not losers. We're actually very, very successful at our prime directive, which is self-protection. So if you want to make more money or have more fame or success or love or health or any yummy thing, the first thing we need to do is make it safe. So back to how I became this money magnet coach. I got rid of the biker. <laughs> and then I had a problem. I just got rid of the monster. Oh, dear. I now have no relationship with money at all, and I live in L.A. And I thought, well, okay, we need, we need to replace the biker immediately so that he doesn't come back. And I thought, who would I want in my life so much that I would want this person even if it's money? And then, you know, thank you, my overactive imagination, instantly I saw this tall, dark, handsome, romantic, sweet, clean, wonderful, safe, gorgeous guy in a tuxedo and carrying a bouquet of red flowers who wanted to woo me. And that was wild. That money could feel that way about me and want to be with me. And at the same time, I felt really deeply how much I had been breaking his heart and hurting him all these years that I've been pushing him away and treating him like a monster. So I talked with him. I spoke with him and I said, what do you need from me so you can stay with me the way you want to? And this is the great thing about making money a person. He spoke back and he said, I need you to love me. And I need you to stop treating me like a monster because it hurts. Wow. And suddenly I realized how much power I have. I am, the, I am the decider of whether he's in my life or not. The, the power and the responsibility is all on me because I've got the body. And I got how much power I had to hurt him unintentionally. So we made a deal. That next time he brought me a present, which usually looked like a potential client, instead of hemming and hawing and getting all ashamed about charging money and how much I charge as if he were this big, scary, ugly monster, I would just say my fee and shut up, which is my <laughs> way of saying thank you and isn't he cute? 
you know? <laughs> and the very next day, four people hired me at double what I'd ever charged before in my life. Wow. And they just kept coming and they just kept coming. And to, so I got a waiting list. I started group programs before I used to struggle to make $100. Now I've made 100000 in a month. And I have a very active, dynamic relationship with money. Even today, when world events like climate change and sexism and, and violence in the world and, you know, ugly things start to really affect me because I'm very sensitive, you know, uh, I need to clean up my relationship with money again and so that money can be my partner on creating the world we want to live in as opposed to being the villain who is causing all these, tra all these traumas out there. And then I see, and it's really weird, and I come, you know, I'm this straight-A student who comes from a family of scientists and lawyers, so I'm like super skeptical while being mystical at the same time. I can't explain it. Uh, but it's funny because I will see the financial results immediately. For instance, I, I did my process on myself um, a couple months ago because I was, you know, getting sensitive to things going on I, and I could feel it. And I made, what was it? Uh, $37,000 within two hours. Wow. So, and clients, you know, I, my newest, it, well, I, that's kind of private, but um, yeah, I'm not going to. Clients, and it's a running joke in my business that every time I speak publicly, somebody in my audience makes $10,000. So I just received an email a couple days ago from a woman named Lynn who saw me speaking in, in Phoenix, Arizona, late, late last year. And she, was, she said, does this count? And she told me her story of slaying her money monster and meeting her money honey and asking a client who owed her $7,000 to pay her. And the, the client thanked her and then gave her $10,000 of goods and services to. Wow. Yeah. You know, it really has to, if there's, as much as I would like to think that business and money and success is a doing thing, and I believe very, very strongly in action and being responsible and learning and all that stuff, I really do believe that. And at the end of the day, I would say my results are 95% what's going on inside of me and not what I'm doing. And I don't believe in sitting on the couch and practicing the law of attraction, doing vision boards and chanting and meditating and all that. If it works for you, do it. Obviously, do it if it works for you. Doesn't work for me. But what does work for me is uncovering the obstacle, personifying it into my money monster, eradicating the monster, and establishing a new relationship that feels hyper real, where we can have a dialogue and I take action. And that's what I teach. So do you think that most people having money problems have that same monster, that same type of monster that they're, they're trying to uh, wrestle with, if you will? Well, I, and, uh, I would say that every monster is as unique as the person. <laughs> the, you will not find your monster in your monster story. I have a lot of friends and colleagues who are talking about change your money mom to change your money story, knock yourself out, have fun. That is the, the money is the symptom, it's not the cause. So in your life story, your life experience, before you were even aware of money, you had experiences of being loved or not loved. You had experiences of being good enough or not feeling good enough. You had experiences of feeling unsafe and hurt and wounded like the world was a scary place. And it's those experiences, every experience of heartbreak, betrayal, not feeling good enough, the world not being a safe place, really personal. And the more it doesn't look like it has to do with money, the more relevant it is. So for the girl, who had the eating disorder or 
an accident or a, or the person who had like a violent parent or an alcoholic parent or a violent partner or you were betrayed by your significant other. We all have something that made you doubt yourself and your worth and your place on this earth. I would go for where is the most pain because that will be your fastest route to the material, to the feeling, the experience that you can then personify the root cause, this experience. You can personify that as your monster. Because money, you know, money doesn't really exist. We just made it up. It's made up. It doesn't exist in nature. But what does exist is love and value and safety. And I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to, I was just going to say, I totally agree with everything you're saying. I, I think that what I'm hearing or the way I'm translating it could be even self-confidence. Um, in, in I, because if you look at the really successful people um, and you look at how, how, how success, how they became successful, most of it has to do with self-confidence. And I think that money is like any other energy, as you mentioned. Um, people are attracted to confident people. I think, um, and there's probably a fine line between being confident and being arrogant. But I think when you when you are on the right side of confidence, people want to be around you and they want to give you money. Yes. So it makes sense. We have to work on our self confidence. We have to work on on our inner self. And every and I believe me, I've I've had all these same issues. And, you know, I've been in business over 30 years and, and I've had my ups and downs and I've had times when I was totally not confident. And I can, I can absolutely now when I'm looking back, think about those times and they were the worst times for my life financially as well. So if you think about it, it must, it, it has to be true that in the, and you know, it's kind of, it's self love, I guess, if you will. I think at the deepest level, it all really, more than anything, boils down to love. And we may have self-confidence in one area, but not in another. And yeah. the way I see things is that the universe gets our attention for our own evolution. I find this a useful way of looking at life. And the universe gets our attention primarily through challenges in love, health, and money and lets us know where we need to grow. Uh, for those of us who have money as like our spiritual teacher, I think we really lucked out because you can go for a really long time with poor health. You can go a really long time or forever without finding that love you desire. And you can get by with almost no time <laughs> with money. Money will get your attention. So it is, a, it is the best vehicle for growth because it impacts everything else. It impacts your love relationships and your health and your legacy and your happiness, all of it. So when I notice that I'm becoming financially insecure or my sales are down or whatever it is, to me, it's like, it's a gift. I, I see it as, oh, my money honey is trying to get my attention. What do I need to learn here? And that turns things around much more quickly for me. Wow. So you're working with a client and they're having struggles. So what are some of the steps that you take to help them um, uncover their, their money monster, if you will, and start becoming a money magnet? Well, it always starts. And that's what I do, whatever somebody brings to me, I always start with what I call financial alchemy. That's my process. And the first step is uncovering the root cause, what's in the way. And I might start easy with something like, so what are some of the negative things you've heard or seen or experienced about money? And we will start, or I might even say, why do you think you have a money monster? Because most people who get so far as to become my client already know my work. You know, they saw an interview like this and they, they know what I do already and decided I'm the person for them. 
So I might say, why do you think you have a money monster? And people, people will start to open up. Now, by the way, you don't necessarily have to do this with me to get the result. For instance, my newest client was buying my book on Amazon for two years before she hired me. She also made a quarter of a million dollars in a month using my workbook before she hired me. How excited do you think I was to work with her? You know? <laughs> and my client Carolyn made $86,000 within 12 hours of listening to me teach a teleclass before she hired me. And then we tripled that. And she came with me on my ultimate money goddess retreat in Bali that I do once every year. So honestly, you know, if you can get the result without my labor, yay. Yeah, that's even better. So uncover the root cause. You're digging around for the pain, the insecurity, anything that has ever made you feel unlovable, unworthy, or unsafe. And you just build it up and build it up until it is so big and ugly that you can't tolerate it anymore. And then you turn it into a person. And this is a person you don't want around. And you are willing to get rid of by any means necessary. And I, I had this wonderful client in Spain who's a vegan who was like, oh my God, I can't kill my imaginary money monster. I'm a vegetarian. And Yes, you can. It's imaginary. <laughs> but it's really, you know, it's a matter of life and death. It's you or it. The person watching me right now with the most pain and insecurity has the biggest advantage in this process. There is no magic. There's no transformation in neutrality. We are creating polarity because that's what makes big change happen, happen immediately and have it last. So you want to have, you really just, you need to light up the neurology. And then when it's bad enough, you make it a person and then you get rid of the person. You destroy it. You do what you need to do. Leave no bloody bits. And then when it's <laughs> gone, it feels gone. And that can feel scary and that can feel wonderful. It can feel light. It can feel empty. It just feels different than anything you've experienced before that's when you know it's gone. So now there's room to meet the opposite. All the bad stuff, all the bad stuff in the world and your life went away with the monster and all that's left is good. And then you meet your money honey. Uh, in my experience, having coached thousands of people through this over many, many, many years, I have learned from experience that for the best results, talking the best financial results and the best life transformation, a lover archetype works best. When I first had, you know, my transformation, I have all these clients and we're not, I'm not marketing myself as a money coach. I waited about two years before I came out of the prosperity closet until I really like perfected this and made it work for other people because in the beginning, oh my God, I failed and I couldn't figure out why. But you know, clients would have their new relationship with money would be a dog or a cat or a horse. Horses know crap about money. Don't have <laughs> a horse make your investment decisions. Better than a monster, but it really, you know, it's started to change and I started to see clients get financial results and get them quick when it became a person and equal and intimate. Not Oprah or Gandhi or Jesus because you want somebody who is vulnerable and your peer. You can be really close to. If you're going to make a Jesus, it has to be a Jesus that you want to have sex with. That's up to you. So, <laughs> and so that's step number four. Step number five is you have a conversation with this person who feels so real to you. And step number six is you take action. You agree together what action you're going to take, and then you do it. Because if you don't, you're breaking trust. A million years ago, or nine years ago, I was coaching a woman on a teleseminar who I didn't know at all named Katie Curtin. And uh, 
she and her money honey agreed that she would go skating. By the way, I love answers like that. I love the stuff that doesn't make any conscious sense because that's where the real wisdom is when it's not coming from your conscious mind. But her money honey told her to go skating. So she took her son out skating in Canada in December when it's really cold because she had just been working nonstop in total anxiety for God knows how long. So she and her son went out skating and they had a really good time and she came home and got a phone call and received $10,000 without asking for it. Wow. Uh, she's gone on and done much, much better since um, because you know we're still in contact and she's really extraordinary. But that's what I'm talking about. It doesn't happen until you take the action. There's um, another... Oh, gosh, I can't remember her name. Oh, I hate it when I can't remember names. But she, you know, her money kept telling her to go on a walk, and she was always too busy and too busy and too busy and trying to make money and didn't go on a walk. And then finally she went out on a walk and picked up two clients. So, you know, do it. <laughs> I'm a, for all I'm talking about inner stuff, I also we also have bodies. Yeah, yeah. So take action, whether it makes sense yeah. or not. Well, you have to get off your butt. <laughs> That's for sure, you know. Um, you know, so it sounds to me, and I want to clarify this, the process, is it more of a conscious process or a subconscious process, or is it a combination of both combination. when you're talking about getting rid of that? Yeah, the personhood makes invisible, unconscious things visible. Like, I had no idea that I felt that way about money until I made money a person. Also, giving money a voice, especially when it becomes the money honey, the good relationship with money, it gives you information through the eyes of a lover who really sees the best of you that you can't see yourself. It gives you access to information that you may not be able to hear in your own voice because we have so much crap with what we should be doing, what we didn't do well enough, what our coach told us, and blah, 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 blah. So we want to we want to make the monster external because we don't destroy ourselves. And then we make the money honey external because we also know our value by how we are loved. So you get to have the experience of being loved. And those of you who have never had a good loving relationship, it changes your blueprint. One of the most yeah. fun things for me we were talking about love and money. One of my favorite universal side effects of this work, I talk about the money because it's good for marketing and the numbers are fabulous. Tom made $1.5 million six weeks after we had our first session. You know, good numbers. But love is just as much of a side effect as the money is. So I've had these clients come to me and they're on the verge of divorce and I have like three of them who are eight years into their second honeymoon, you know, out when people who have been single who attract love because it's, it's all, it's, it's, I like the word macrocosm or microcosm. It's all, you know, it's the same thing. It just shows up in different areas of our life. It's our relationship with life and ourselves. Well, you know what I think, too, is interesting. Um, and I think, of course, everybody knows that money gives us freedom to do the things we really need to do in this world that, that give us the, the chance and the opportunity to make the most difference. Um, and, and when you couple that with love, obviously, you're going to be just do amazing things. So I, I am just so excited that people get to learn from you today and, of course, have learned from you for many years. Tell us a little bit about, if you can, I know you've shared a couple of examples, uh, maybe your most, your biggest success in terms of a client that you've worked with uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. And it could have been your first client, your last client, or somewhere in between. What is most, the biggest success that maybe surprised you or, or thought, wow, that was even more than I expected or they expected? I, you know, that's tricky because, you know, it happens all the time. Um, but, you know, one of my favorite 
examples. God, it's like choosing between babies, you know. Um, you can keep more than one. Yeah, we have time for more than one. You know, my my own little limitation is my limited ability to remember them all. But um, I like to talk about Athena Burke. Um, I love her dearly to this day, and this was. I think she hired me back in 2007 at the end, I think, you know, seven or eight, one of those years. And when she told me her circumstances, <gasps> you know, she owed so much money. She had so little income. She was in a, a bad marriage. She had two small children. She, and I was like, oh, you know, afraid to, you know, do no harm, do no harm, afraid to accept money from her. And then I had this voice say, treat her like an adult and let her make her own decision. And so she hired me. And she has been one of my favorite clients ever. Within four months, she was making tens of thousands of dollars working part time and going on trips to Miami with her money, honey, going on money moons. Because money that moves. was what he wanted to do, her imaginary money, honey. Then she married a guy who had the same name as her money, honey. And, oh, wow. And so she manifested her money, honey. <laughs> she manifested her human honey. They didn't look alike in any way except they had the same name and the same eyes. Wow. And she's been married to him for a long time. And I think, you know, one of the reasons I love her so much is because this, you know, because she works this program probably better than anybody on earth. She goes on monthly or sorry, she goes on daily morning walks with her money, honey in nature. Still, she, you know, she's a spiritual master. She's been on the spiritual path for a super long time. She's been a psychic channeler and a, and a coach forever. And she says this is the deepest work that she ever did, and she still does it. And when this is the coolest thing that she shared with me uh, last year was when she has a fight with her husband, and she goes on this walk with her imaginary money, honey, and she tells her money, honey, all the bad things about her husband and how awful he is and how upset she is. And she's hoping that this time her money, honey, will take her side and say, you're right. Oh, that cat. But he never does. He says, your husband is the closest you will ever have to me in human form. And we can't make him perfect because then you wouldn't talk to me anymore. Wow. That's pretty wow. awesome. Yeah. Profound, if you think about it. Yeah. And to come to that kind of a realization on a walk with the with your imagination, if you will, um, that's that's. Uh, so, how do people get out of their head and into that space mm -hmm. that helps them to discover their money monster, money honey? That is the million dollar question, literally, because I don't believe in millionaire mindsets. If Mindset worked, nobody in America would ever go on a diet again. This is not, this again, the mindset is the symptom, it's not the cause. And, mm -hmm. and I'm looking more for a millionaire heart set. So the way to get out of your head, it doesn't work as an intellectual exercise. It also doesn't work very well if you skip the money monster and try to go to the money honey, because you're not really changing anything. If the money monster is still in bed, there isn't room for the money monster and the money honey in you. Your money monster will cock block your money honey. That's the kind of financial <laughs> coach I am. So uh, <laughs> you start with step number one. What could possibly be the problem? What could be wrong? And you go for the feeling. This is why training other coaches to do this is so challenging. I want to train other coaches to replace me. I really do. And I'm, that's on my plan for 2017. Uh, but I, in a, I've trained, I trained Athena. She got it like that. Uh, you want to follow the energy and the feeling. Honestly, if the stories that my clients tell me are not true, I don't care. It doesn't matter because the feeling is true to them. 
You, so it's not even about the facts, but you're just, you're going, you're looking for the pain. What could be the pain of, you know, what has made me not feel good enough? What has made me feel frightened? What, you know, after all those years of therapy and personal development and psychic healers and Reiki and whatever, whatever you've done, you know, find some pain. And honestly, if you're coming to this work, something wants to change. So you want to find it and you want to magnify it as big as you can because it's like a slingshot. And the more you go into the feeling out of your head and into the experience, the more you will easily catapult over to the opposite. You are creating that tension and that momentum. So it's a full body emotional experience. Do the best you can. Sometimes, I mean, you know, this is why I coach people because sometimes we can take ourselves only so far. By the way, only so far may be far enough for you. And then if it's not, that's when, that's when you ask for help. So do you find people uh, are, have difficulty asking for the help? Not by the time they come to me. <laughs> Especially because I do. They're in, they're in right? <laughs> well, yeah. I, you know, and I am happily often the coach of last resort because they've gone to other people who couldn't go as deep as I go or can't do what I can do. And, you know, that's one of the, you tried other things. I tried everything. And by the way, sometimes when you try everything and it doesn't work, maybe you're birthing the next thing the world needs. Um, but I, I, I am a person who just has a capacity to go places that maybe wouldn't be safe for other people and make sure that my client comes out the other side safely. Uh, is going there fun? Not really. That's why I take so few clients. Uh, my favorite thing to do is really my money goddess retreat in Bali. Um, that it's because it is the most intense and transformative and dramatic and bonding experiences. The women who go stay friends for life and they stay friends. They stay friends with each other and friends with me. So, you know, I am a junkie and that, you know, that, that's my drug. Do you know Lisa Jimenez? No, I don't. Let's move to California near you. I'm going to introduce the two of you because she also does a woman's retreat in Bali. Uh, and I think the two of you definitely need to re to, to uh, work. She talks more about um, overcoming dragons. Mm -hmm. So it's not, she doesn't focus necessarily on the money, but she does focus on the sense of self-worth and stuff. And I think the two of you would have a lot in common. So I'm going to, I'm going to introduce the two of you because I got to get her on my show anyway. So, uh, she, her and I have been friends for many years. She just came out with a new book called Slay the Dragon. Mm -hmm. So it would be a good, a good, um, I'm sure that a lot of the people that have gone through her retreat would probably be very interested in yours, you know, for a different reason, obviously, because I think that, you know, we, we can slay certain dragons, but maybe not the, not slaying the right ones that help get us to where we want to be. And so if you're fine, I'm actually going to get your book, Financial Alchemy. Should have gotten it a long time ago. But it's never too late. <laughs> no. And the thing about the book, just so that you know, so that you're getting what you want. I created this, and I created it originally back in 2006. I have thousands and thousands of books. Between my husband and I, we had to convert our garage just to create a library for the overflow. And I wanted to create something that people wouldn't just read once, feel like it was a good idea, and then put on the shelf and not live. So the book is a hybrid of a book and a workbook. So not only is there content, but there are easy peasy exercises that you just do every single day because I'm a really big proponent of very little effort for very dramatic results. So that's, that is the design of that book. Well, and I think that for the people listening who may not be quite ready for your energy, <laughs> Because that's what I'm thinking might be. Uh, getting that book will just give them a, a good reason to pick up the phone and call you too. So definitely, I'll put it in, in here again. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And, so and tell read me the that. reviews on Amazon. People have had insane results oh, with the book. Them. 
I don't have to be there. <laughs> and I, and I'm really, I'm so cool with that. That's great. Well, you know, and I've, I've bought so many books that I have never read. And I, so I've, I've made it a goal not to buy anymore until I know I'm going to read them. And that's <laughs> what I'm doing. So, uh, so what's been the most surprising thing about your career and your success so far? And then the next question is, uh, tell us, uh, what, what you're working on now. Mm. To me, given where I come from, the fact that I make money at all and make a living and then make a lot of money and this house that we're, that I'm in right now, I own in Southern California, which is when we go to like Rome and Montenegro and Croatia and all these amazing, beautiful cities and I and we ask so how much how much does it cost to live here uh the rest of the world is so cheap after you've lived in Los Angeles so I really didn't see myself buying a house in Southern California at all because I want to keep traveling and you know pouring money into taking classes and workshops in my business so buying the house and 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 thinking that oh half a million dollars is cheap and what a steal you know and below my budget that really is kind of shocking to me so i would say there are three things that i kind of walk around seriously going oh my god i can't believe this that i have this business and this income is like amazing to me that i own my own house is also really shocking to me and I'm, it's still new to me we we moved in last april and the third one my marriage to my husband uh really uh you know i have my list of must-haves and would be nices <laughs> like it would be nice if he plays guitar and builds things and loves to travel and but not necessary and he builds houses he plays guitar he was an editor for Miramax Films. He is a travel journalist. He came up with the idea of the 100 weddings. He is romantic, funny, handsome, sweet. And he's also been teaching Kabbalah for 25 years. So he had all my must-haves and all of my would-be nices. And, and I didn't know that somebody like this existed. So that, and by the way, that has everything to do with the work that I do because the same stuff that pushes money away pushes love away and we have to we have to make it safe to have what we want and I think aren't we lucky when we find our knight in shining armor I found mine 23 years ago and I'm still he thinks he always I, when people ask him how long we've been married he says oh just a few weeks now we've been together 23 years, almost, well, 24 years actually. And, um, and I always love that because he means it. You know, I have to really think about how long we've been together because it doesn't seem like that long, but I, I don't ever answer. Oh, it's just, just been a few weeks. <laughs> Some days it does feel like 23 years only because you get to know someone on such an intimate level as you go through life with them. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, I wish we had time to spend, talking about just so many more things. Let's talk a little bit about what a typical day is like for you. Or is there such a thing? There really is not. Uh, okay. I need a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility and a lot of variety. Uh, growing up, you know, coaching didn't exist. So I bounced around a lot trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, so it really depends. Some stretches are very easy peasy where I'm just writing some emails and coaching clients. And then sometimes I have an event like my Bali retreat, like teaching my destination retreat blueprint program. Uh, right now I'm putting together a little tiny mini summit for February on manifestation because I'm fascinated by that topic and I have these friends who I think are pretty brilliant. Um, Sark is going to be in the lineup, Bob Doyle from The Secret. These are my friends. 
And I thought, what do I want to do that is fun? And that's a big driver in my business. And I have, you know, we're talking about Portugal. I was just speaking with somebody about speaking in Canada. I'm going to be speaking in Idaho. I think Sun Valley, I think that's Idaho. Um, I think so. So if you know, yeah, I know where you talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm not a nine to five kind of person. I'm not a great planner. I, I hire people to help me with that because I need a lot of freedom and a lot of variety. I need to have time to go to other countries and get married again and again and again. So I'm, I really believe that, you know, there's so many teachers out there who tell you that you have to do things a certain way or you have to do things their way. And I don't do very well when I do things somebody else's way. So I really just need to check in with myself. Uh, in my workbook, I have a whole thing on creating the year and I make it very loose. Like I have my goals for the year and I break them up in quarters and I don't know exactly when some of them will happen. Some of them have dates. And I try to have as little going on at one time as possible because the less you have on your plate the faster you will finish it and then you can add more and get so much more done you know that's like the whole myth about uh being multitask being being a multitasker i'm not i do have a lot more on my plate than i should have but that's because i have a hard time saying no <laughs> and i love what i do so it doesn't feel like work most of the time. Um, I know we I, we have someone who'd like to come into the room, and I'm going to invite her to uh, to take that empty seat if that's okay with you. She has a I'm sure she has a question. Uh, and before I I'm going to put her in the room, but I'd like to I I don't know if we got the question answered. What projects you're working on currently? So I'm going to let Laura in the room, and you can answer that question while she pops in. Great. So go ahead. Hello, Laura. Welcome. Hopefully we'll get to see you. And of course, feel free to ask uh, Morgana a question. I've just asked her the question, um, which, what project she's currently working on. So Laura will get uh, into the room in a moment. Now that I said, you know, try to do as few things at a time, I'm going to show what a big liar I am because <laughs> I just launched Morgana Radio which is my free weekly podcast at MorganaRadio.com. And my first guest was my friend Deborah Poneman, who's partnering with Marcy Shimoff on their Year of Miracles annual coaching program. And so I've got Morgana Radio. And then I am gearing up to have a three-day summit in uh, February five, six, and seven, uh, called Manifestation Masterclasses. So that's number two. And then the third one is I'm starting to interview people uh, for my Ultimate Money Goddess Experience Retreat in Bali. I take only eight women because I do that deep dive transformation, you know, hunting out the money monster, destroying it, setting you up with your money, honey with each woman. And that's only the first goddess archetype. Oh, wow. And, so, you know, that's when, like, when is the when is your uh, Bali um, retreat? Uh, that is May seventh through the thirteenth. Okay. Oh, fabulous! Right so around Mother's Day. Day. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. So, um, and so you have those events going on. So it sounds like you've been very busy. Do you have any tips or resources that you would like to share with our audience? Because I guess Laura was not able to get into that open seat after all. So, Laura, if you have a question, go ahead and type it into the uh, chat area and we'll try to answer it. Go ahead. Well, I also, besides the radio, I shoot weekly videos based on questions that my audience sends me and answering questions. And uh, two ways to get lots of free content, or three ways. I mean, you can go hunting through my blog at morganaray.com. You can be on my VIP list after... There's an opt-in for four money magnetic videos at my website, morganaray.com. Uh, or if you don't want to get emails, and I totally understand that, I have an app called Money Honey App. 
So uh, at moneyhoneyapp.com, so on your iPhone or your Android or your tablet or your computer, whatever you choose, you don't have to get any emails. And when I have a new video or I have a new interview or I just have some inspirational thought to send to you, you'll get a little ping that, you know, there's something new on the app. So I recommend that as like a, a really nice first date. You know, if you like my profile and you want to take the next step, you, we have the Money Honey app. Love it. I love it. The Money Honey app. So I put all that in there and just make sure. Is it money, Morgana radio.com? Okay. Yeah. R A D I O. Morgana Ray, Morgana Radio. Yeah. So if I've got all those, if yeah. there's any corrections, if you see anything in the chat that I incorrectly wrote, please. I'm not, oh, Money Honey app, Morgana Ray.com. Oh, yeah, you have it all Okay, perfect. good. I want to make sure because people who watch the show later on can then click on these links as well. Um, wow, it's been a terrific, a, a terrific time with you. Do you have any last thoughts you'd like to share with our audience before we go? Yeah, you know, there is so much blame and shame as part of being human. And I really invite you to come from the perspective that you are not broken. You do not need to be fixed. You may not like your circumstances, and that's a great invitation to change them. It's not that it's your fault, but it is your sacred responsibility to respond to these triggers, to find out what's in the way so that you can evolve, so that you can be loved, be worthy, be safe to have the life you really desire and have the impact in the world that only you uniquely can bring. Wow. Morgana, thank you so much for being with us today. And everyone for, who is listening, we've been talking to Morgana Ray, the Money Magnet Coach. I'm delighted. Again, my name is Heidi Richards Mooney and I'm your host. And our next event or our next show will be on January 13th at 2 p.m. We will have Margaret Marguerite Beatty, who will be talking about Udemy and how to use it to grow your business. Morgana, thank you again for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks so much.